dear, dear. Well, yesterday we had the Golden Adventurers doing our presenting for us. It's really nice. It gives you a chance to sit back, you know, let somebody else do the work. Today we've got somebody else who, who's going to introduce himself. Craig Charles. Oh, hey. <clears throat> My name is Craig Charles, the man, the myth, the legend, the not-so-tall, not-so-dark, not-so-handsome man, the scally in your alley, the scouse in your house, the streetwise intellectual from the Liverpool intelligentsia, the poet, pugilist, philosopher, philistine, and juvenile genius, and Craig Charles has got to be funky. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> what did all that mean? Nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. It was just like a hype. Now, are you awake now? Are you all right? Because what we said at the top of the programme, you had been for a sleep, hadn't you? Yeah, I've been, I'm recording an album at the moment. I've been in the studio until about five o'clock in the morning. Then I've got the seven past ten train, ten past seven look, train. There he is, waking up in the dressing room. Bless him. Oh, look, you've got glasses on. Yeah, yeah, they're not real, though. Well, <laughs> they're, wh they're... Why are you wearing glasses, then? Um, I don't know. I think I'm hiding from something. Maybe the doctor will be able to tell me about it. Do they think... Do they I think, think it makes me look a bit more... <laughs> I think it makes me look a bit more intellectual, you know? I always feel as though I look like a mugger like this, you know? Um, no, you look very intellectual. That's great for the poetry in you. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you come to be a poet? I mean, I reckon if you go out and ask a thousand youngsters, boys, mm. what they want to be, you'd be very lucky if one of them came up and said, I'd like to be a poet when I grow up. How do you come to be a poet? Oh, it's the girls, Judy. What do you mean? The girls love it. Oh, no! They do, honestly. They love it. What, you, they, it's so romantic being a poet, isn't it? I feel like, you know, <laughs> I say, hello, I'm a poet, and I'm there already. Those <laughs> 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 tired old lines still work. They oh, they do, they do. The roses honestly. are reddish, you do all that. Oh, no, I never do that. I, just, I get a little bit more it's like contemporary, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, like, the roses are dead, basically. <laughs> 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 No, it goes well. It goes Actually, well. I shouldn't put you in a box and call you a poet because I know that it's your policy really to diversify. You're sort of a, an actor, a musician, a poet. I mean, is that you don't want to be thought of as any one thing? Is that right? Well, when I when I first, first thought that, I thought I was a poet, obviously. But I, I did about two hundred poems on television in the, in the space of about two years, and yeah. I thought, see, once the the, the nation sort of like. Uh, See you as something. That, once you're established in the nation's consciousness as something, they don't let. They don't want you to be anything else. Then you know. So I, I stopped doing that for a while. And I, I got into the acting with Red Dwarf, and then, you know, now, you know. Mm. I was always a musician anyway. That's how I started out. That's how I became a poet through, like writing the music and the words. And all my bands kept breaking up, so I just thought I'll go and do the words. So I went and did the words because I, I knew that I couldn't break up with myself. <laughs> well, the Red Dwarf <laughs> was what really brought you to our attention, I suppose. A very, very funny series, and we're going to have a look at a, a clip of it now. And this is actually one of those episodes where you're up to something. <laughs> was that was that actually you? Uh, yeah, the, with, with the pigtails and the yeah, hat flying through the air. Then. Oh yeah, I was I was actually blown up. See, the thing was. Um, when we're doing it in rehearsals, I, you know, they were saying, we'll get a stuntman, and I'm going, no, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I do my own stunts, you know, thinking I'm Robert De Niro or something. And um, when it came to the day, the set was built up about, like, six feet in the air. So I had to fly over the thing that was another four feet high. So that means I had to fly over that and drop, like, ten feet. And we only had, like, one mat. So I th you had to, like... The way it was, they cut to that thing where I'm going like that, and then they cut back to me... I run up, hit the trampoline, and they cut back to me, explode, you know, jumping in the air. And the first time I did it, I actually missed the mat and landed flat on my face like that. Didn't know if it Have you learned your, <laughs> have you learned your lesson? No, no, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Pain, I can handle it. Not long ago, you, you went to Hollywood. Is that your idea of megastardom? Is that, is that where it's at? Is that where you want to be, big, oh, successful yeah. American? Have you come back as Sydney Poitier? Hey, listen, I mean, let's go deep and deep here, Tarquin. <laughs> no, 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 I... Hollywood's not. I mean, it's, it's such a soulless place. You know? I love New York better. New York, New York's really good because mm. it's, I don't know, it's like it's it's a bit European and it's like cosmopolitan and like you've got an affinity with the people. The people have got a lot of life and mm. in places in Hollywood, it's illegal to walk in the street. You know, if you're walking down the street, they arrest you. You've got to be, in, you've got to drive everywhere, and everywhere's so far away from each other. Like you know, I mean, I suppose it is in a way. Like you know, you think about these Hollywood stars and all that, but. But can you see yourself in the big Hollywood mansion that belonged to a superstar driving along in a big cat? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Maybe you can't see me, but I can see me, baby. You know those dreams we were talking about before? Yeah. <laughs> That's, what I'm That's my recurring nightmare. No, I, yeah, yeah, I'd love it. Yeah. But I thought you were really sort of, you know, working class background, yes. a lad of your roots, and that's where you wanted to stay. That's, that's, that's the big mistake. I mean, that's, that's the thing about, like, you know, Eric Bristow, uh, you know, shouldn't get a darts type thing because he's working class and he plays darts. I mean, <clears throat> should you only be successful if you give a lot of money to the Conservative Party? Should you only be successful if you're rich? 
I mean, like, you know, uh, anyone, if you've got talent, you should be able to be a star. Mm. If you're working class, or if you're black, or you come from Liverpool, that shouldn't get in the way. I mean, if you can do the job, then you can do the job, surely. So how do you see you're going to do that? How, where do you see your success? Hollywood's what is your success Hollywood's really not in, in, my, in my plans at the moment, mm. you know? I mean... <laughs> I mean, you are doing an incredible amount of things all at one time. You're, you're in the children's programme, What's That Noise? Mm. Is it's that a music show, it's not really... It's like, it's not a kid's show. Don't tell your mum no. <laughs> <laughs> it's only children's time, Yeah, it's only it? children's time, like, yeah, but... See, Red Dwarf really sort of attracted the attention of the kids. The kids really got into Red Dwarf, so I thought, well, you know, if the kids like Red Dwarf, then why not get into the kids? See, the thing is, when I was a kid, I watched Tiz Was and Lenny... And I grew up with Lenny Henry. Now, no one sees Lenny Henry as a, a children's entertainer, because mm. we grew with Lenny Henry, and Lenny Henry grew with us. So that's the sort of, like, idea behind it all. And, and what about the play you're doing, Teachers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> talking in plugs now instead of yeah, dreaming in plugs. <laughs> yeah, um, that's in January, yes. Yeah, I, I start rehearsals on Monday. Mm. We open on the 23rd, we're doing a play called Teachers by John Godber. He wrote Bouncers and Up and Under and things like that. It's an hilarious play. It's on the Arts Theatre in London. And what are you playing in it? I play the lead. It's, 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 well, it's, 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 it's a, it's a three-hander. There's three people who do it. Yeah. I play a guy called Salty. It's about three school kids and they, they put on this play and we all play adults and then we play kids and things like that. I get a chance to play a lot more characters. I get the chance to prove that I can, I can be something other than a scouser. Oh, do you? Yeah, so at me and my mates, hey, what? Well, Terry, Jerry, no, Kelly. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a good old Cockney actor there. <laughs> and of course, you're, you're working on an album with your band, the Sons of Gordon Gecko. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's what I was doing last night. That's what I was in the studio so late last night. Yeah, we're doing a band. But, uh, I've got a band and we're doing an album of music. And so I was always a musician. I was always like, you know, I was always in bands. And it's, it's all turned full circle for mm. me now. I know it sounds like so arrogant. It sounds like I'm so busy and like, so, but it's not like that. What you know, kind of like, music? I mean, the name Gordon Gecko. I mean, what, I've heard that before. It's from, about, from the film called Wall Street. Have you yeah. seen a film called Wall Street? Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Douglas got an Oscar yeah. for playing Gordon Gecko. And it's all about, you know, that greed is good. Lunch is for wimps type thing, you know. Yeah. And like, it's counterbalanced by. We do a lot of songs about like. Uh, things like not quite a born again Christian. It's all about like uh, money is the new temple. Uh, uh, God is as like you know success. God is business. You know, it, it's all about the juxtaposition of that. Well, know? whichever way you do it, through acting, through music, or poetry, Craig Charles, lots of success. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>